everybody. I think we're live right now. Um, I'm going to give everyone a few minutes um, to come into the live uh, just to make sure that everybody is here. We've got almost 30 people from all around the world that are joining us today. So when you come into the live video, if you could just say hi so we all know that you're here, um, then we can uh, get started when most people are here. So feel free to comment in the comments and just say hi. Uh, I'm here and then we will be uh, starting. So it looks like we've got like four people right now. Um, we're expecting a number of people to come in. Um, hi everybody, come on in, it's good to see you. Uh, just comment in the comments that you're here and say hi. Um, I'm pretty excited to see everybody. Um, and we're gonna be getting started very shortly. Hi Betsy, hi, good to see you. Betsy just joined us like five minutes ago, you set your payment for the, uh, the online workshop about five minutes ago, which is great. Um, I'm really, really excited that everyone's here. Hi Ulrich, good to see you. Um, hopefully everybody can see me and hear me. Uh, I think um, my microphone quality is pretty good. Uh, the video might be a little bit grainy at times. I apologize for that. That's just the nature of my webcam, not the greatest. Um, great, so we've got 10 people in here. We're just waiting for a few more people to join and then we're gonna get started. If you guys have your cellos um, handy, you might wanna just uh, get your cello and set up on your chair, get yourself comfortable. We're gonna be doing some stuff on the cello and also um, some stuff away from the cello. So when we have a few more people in, I will, um, I will make sure that uh, we get started. Okay, so I'm gonna just move back to my chair so we can get started. All right, so if you have any questions or comments about what we're doing, um, there's going to be a Q&A at the end of the session. Uh, so I can't answer your questions until the very end because I'm away from my computer. But at the end of the workshop, um, we're going to have a Q&A. So that's when you can type your questions and I will answer them. Um, so I just want to tell everybody a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Marion Arthur. Um, and I have been playing cello professionally for about 20 years. Uh, people also know me as Mia the Creative Cellist. Mia is my nickname. Um, and I went to uh, the University of Toronto in Canada for my performance degree in cello. And I'm also a yin yoga um, devotee. I guess I'm currently studying to be a yin yoga teacher. Uh, so some of the things that we're going to do today, just a few of them, are going to be kind of yin yoga related. Um, so hopefully those things are going to help you with your pain and your tension. Uh, so I studied at the University of Toronto and my teachers were Shauna Rolston and Winona Zelenka. I don't know if you guys know those people. Shauna is a very famous cellist from Canada and Winona is uh, also renowned. She was the principal cellist of the University of uh, sorry, not the University of Toronto, the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. So I studied with both of them in university and I got some really great uh, tips from both of them about playing your instrument in a way that is kind of ergonomically correct for your body. Um, so my background and why I got into helping people, uh, helping people with their pain and tension while they're playing is that when I was in university, I, um, I had a repetitive strain injury that I actually um, started like almost right away when I got to university. I started playing Popper High School Studies, the, uh, the high school studies for, uh, for cello by Popper. And I was, doing a lot of rep repetitive um, repetitive movement with my pinky. And I ended up basically uh, getting, I don't know, almost carpal tunnel, but a tendonitis all the way through my hand. So that was kind of my first serious injury as a player. And since that time, I've really been very interested in helping people to uh, avoid this kind of injury. So I had this injury in my hand. It took me a couple of months to rehab that injury. Um, and uh, about 10 years later, I was also diagnosed with arthritis. Um, so as a cello player, you know, that, that can be a pretty bad diagnosis to get. And the arthritis kind of is through the right side of my body. So it's definitely related to playing the cello because as a cellist, as you know, a lot of us, uh, we kind of twist when we're playing, right? So we sort of do this twisting action and that twisting action is not great for your body. It's not great for your neck. It's not great for your shoulder. Um, but there are ways as a cellist when you're playing that we can mitigate sort of the damage we're doing by playing, right? So I, I'm going to go over a couple of those things later. So how you can move 
um, so that you can avoid, um, basically avoid injuring the side of your body. So we're going to be doing that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, so I got really into the ergonomics of playing the cello kind of gradually over my career and as I got older. Um, so I've been to all kinds of workshops, uh, Feldenkrais workshops, Alexander Technique workshops. Um, I had a personal trainer for a while who really, really helped me with some of these issues around twisting and around pain in the shoulders and neck area, particularly in sitting injuries. Um, she really helped me with that. Uh, the trainer I had, she used to be a dancer in um, the National Arts Center Ballet in Canada. So she was a very uh, high caliber professional dancer and she really helped me to figure out how to move my body so that um, I wouldn't be exacerbating injury, right? Because we don't want to be doing that. We want to be able to play for a really long time and have lots of endurance. Um, so I'm going to hopefully help you with some of those things. So basically over my career, I just become more and more interested in helping people uh, to not feel pain when they play. Um, I teach a private studio of over 30 students and almost half of them are adults. And they're adults who are 40 years or older. So I'm 40 and most of the people that I teach are older than that. And if you're um, a cellist over the age of 40, particularly if you're a, an amateur cellist, it can be very challenging to get around some of these physical things that we have to do. So you want to get yourself really set up in a way that uh, just helps you to avoid pain. So today we only have a certain amount of time today and there are all kinds of injuries and all kinds of pains and tensions that you guys might be suffering from. Um, but we're only going to go over a few of them today. Uh, we may, um, in the question and answer, I can answer some of your questions around some other issues. I will let you know at the end of the workshop how if you want to go a little bit deeper into this and into some of these other pains and issues that you might have, how we can do that. But for today, I'm going to tell you the three things that we're going to do today. So I made this huge list. You probably can't read this, but I'm going to read this out to you. This is a very long list of what I call cello pains. There's a lot of cello pains that we can have. And I'm gonna read this list and then I'll just tell you the ones that we're gonna focus on. And then the rest of it, I'll talk about a little bit later what we can do to kind of work on those things. So if you have one of these pains and you're comfortable, in the comments, if you could write uh, whatever the pain is that you're um, experiencing, maybe write that in the comments. And if there's something on this list that I've missed, Maybe you could write that also in the comments so that when I do this in the future, I can address some of those other pains or things that people are having problems with. So the first thing on this list, I think is a really big issue for people, and we're gonna be talking about it today, is pain in the right shoulder and neck. So lots of us as cellists experience a lot of pain in our shoulder and our neck. Um, hands that clamp. So sometimes we get really sore in our hands, both hands can clamp or cramp. So that's something that you might be experiencing. Uh, fatigue in any part of your body, but fatigue often happens in the right arm, like as you're playing. So a lot of people experience right arm fatigue as you're playing. Um, so that's something that we can talk about. Left arm hand stiffness. So moving around the fingerboard, a lot of people feel quite stiff and sore when they do that. Um, some people experience pain in their hips or their side. Uh, some people have told me that they get like what we call tennis elbow. I'm going to call it cello elbow. And that can happen in either arm. I find for cellists most of the time it's like in the right elbow. But you can also get that in the left elbow depending on what's happening uh, with your fingers and the left hand. So tennis elbow, that's a big one. Thumb problems, so thumbs that can lock or squeeze tight, uh, then you get problems in your hands, right? So you might be experiencing that. Some people get eye strain from uh, reading music. You can have headaches. Uh, you can just have overall fatigue from practicing. Uh, you might have sore fingers, right? Any of your finger joints might get sore when you're playing. You might be experiencing lower back pain. And a lot of the lower back pain um, is related to sitting. And I think I had one person, uh, Rachel, she asked me about uh, sitting. And so a little bit later in the q and I'm going to talk about sort of issues with sitting and what we can do to kind of mitigate the pain and help with that tension around your sit bones, right? Because a lot of people get lower back pain from sitting. You might also find that if you're experiencing pain and tension when you play, uh, you might have a loss of focus 
or uh, you might not be able to memorize things as well as you have in the past because you're kind of worried about this pain attention, right, that you're experiencing. Some people, when they're playing, experience a lot of anxiety. And anxiety can kind of be, um, can be a very physical feeling. So you can feel that kind of in your chest or the rest of your body. So some of these things are gonna help you as well with your anxiety and your chest pain. And then the last thing um, that some people experience is numbing. So this can be kind of related to pinching nerves or um, just kind of playing for a very long time. You might feel numb in any part of your body when you're playing. So obviously we won't have time today to go over all of these things. Like this is a giant list that I made. So today I thought I would focus on just three things and if you do have other issues that you want to discuss, we can discuss them in the Q&A and also we can go deeper into this at a later date and I'll tell you guys about that a little bit later. So the things we're going to focus on today in the workshop, we're going to talk about pain in the right shoulder and your neck. So we're going to talk about kind of this area of the body. As a cellist, that is a big area for a lot of people and that can be really debilitating. When you're playing and you feel sore in your neck, that can be just the worst. Uh, we're going to talk about hands because a lot of people have issues with their hands uh, feeling tight or sore throughout the hands. So what can we do about that? And we're going to talk about general arm fatigue. So when you're playing your cello, what can you do to avoid getting really, really tired, right? Which happens. So uh, my approach to pain and tension as a cello player, so I've had, you know, I've done all these workshops and tried all these things. And what I've discovered is that um, taking basically a three-prong approach to these things, uh, to these areas of pain, is the best way to kind of um, help yourself. So, and you can do all of these things on your own. You don't need to take really expensive uh, workshops or anything like that. Um, there's things you can do kind of on your own at home um, to help with these very cello specific pains. So basically they're a combination of some yoga tactics. Um, so I, I really, really, really enjoy yin yoga for this type of pain release because yin yoga, in yin yoga what you do is you hold a pose for a very long time and this encourages the muscles or the, the fascia as we call it, like in your kind of lower skin to, to come apart and to separate and that I, that only happens if you um, if you really hold your poses for a long time. So we're gonna do some long stretching um, as well. I like to use some tools like physiotherapy type tools, which I'll show you later for dealing with specific areas of pain. And these are some great tips that I got from the dancer I said that I work with, my fitness trainer. And the third thing is to strengthen your body. So we may not feel like as cellists a lot of the time, we don't think of ourselves as very athletic, but really the movements that you do on the cello are uh, quite athletic. So what you really need to be doing to, to maximize uh, your chances of not feeling pain and tension is to really get a strong body. So I'm going to show you some of the things I do to help strengthen particularly my upper body, but there are other things you could do as well with your lower body, but we're going to mostly focus on the upper body and some of those strengthening exercises that we can do. So we're going to get started. Um, yeah, like I said, if you would like to comment in the comments about your particular pain, or you can send me a personal message if you'd rather not comment in the comments, just let me know what's going on with you. And then in the question and answer period, uh, we can, we can talk about some of those things. Okay. So the first problem we're going to talk about then is the pain in your right shoulder and neck. So if you're experiencing pain, or even if you're not experiencing pain, it's good to do these things so that in the future, uh, you won't experience pain in the right uh, neck and shoulder. So the very first thing I want to show you, um, if you haven't got one of these, I strongly recommend that you get one. So this thing right here is, uh, it has some different names. Some people call it a therapy ball or a fascia release ball or a lacrosse ball. And what it is, is a really densely packed foam ball. And you can use this to work on pain anywhere in your body. So if you have pain right now in your body, you can take this ball. Um, it's hard for me to demonstrate, but I'm gonna kinda just show you what you do with this. So say for example, you have pain like in your shoulder at the back here. So you would just take this ball and you would put it at the back and then you're gonna either lie down on the floor or push yourself against a wall 
and you're going to dig in to the place that hurts with this ball. And what you'll find with the ball, it's really neat, like you can kind of roll it around, like around if you're standing against a wall. So you're sort of rolling around, and what you're doing is going very slowly and deeply, and you're trying to find areas that hurt. And you'll know when you get to those areas that hurt, because it will be quite intense. The pain will be quite intense. It'll be like a deep pain. If you get a sharp pain, you want to just kind of stop or do this in a very light kind of a way. Like you don't want to be using this on acute injuries because it is very uh, intense. But if you have like just an area of tension, um, so you can basically put this ball on the area of tension and then you just, this is, you just really, really deeply massage into the area against a wall or against the floor. And I find for kind of dealing with immediate, like, oh, I have a really bad knot in my in my neck or something like that, this has really, really helped me. I use this all over my body. I use it for my hip, for my arthritis, and I use it for my neck. It's really great. If you can get this against the wall and just push up and down, this will, will really, really uh, help you a lot. So it's called a fascia release ball. Um, after the workshop, I'm gonna send you guys a PDF with all of the different things that I use. Um, but I strongly recommend you get one of these. Uh, some people use tennis balls. I don't find tennis balls as good. They're not as hard. So you want to get one that's specifically for therapy. Uh, some people use lacrosse balls, which are actually even harder. Um, this one here is kind of like, it's pretty hard, but there's a little bit of give. So that is a good thing to use for any kind of knots or pain. So that would be my first area. If I was experiencing some pain in here, I would do this. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a, um, a stretch uh, with a movement that I like to do. So you guys can actually do this right now if you're sitting on a chair. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your head and you're going to just pull it to the left. Then you're going to take your uh, left arm and put it behind your neck. So you're holding your neck. Now, even just in this position, you may feel some pain and tension. So what you can do, you can actually just rub out the pain like really, really strongly with your fingertips. So you're gonna rub it out. And then as you're doing that, you're gonna take your right shoulder and we're going to just pull it back. Big circles, big circles with your arms. So you can go back maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 times. And if you need a deeper stretch, you feel like it's not really quite getting at it, you can just pull your head a little bit further to the left. And you're going to just curl like this. Just going back and forth like this. And then you're going to stop after about 10 to 15 repetitions. And then what's really important about this um, is to do the same thing on the other side. So even if you're not experiencing pain in your left side, and you're only experiencing pain on the right side, whatever exercise you do, you wanna make sure you do it on both sides to create that balance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna take your, your hand, you're gonna put it on your neck, just pull it back, and then you're gonna move your left shoulder, rotating that back about 10 to 15 times. And when you have a really sore neck, this can feel, this could feel really terrible depending on like how far you're able to move your neck. Try to be very mindful, because you don't want to injure yourself, of how far your neck wants to go. So you're going to do about 10, 15 times on this side, and then you're just going to shake everything out. So you're just going to shake your arms out like this. So if I was warming up to play my cello, I would probably do that exercise um, like three repetitions on each side. So I would do 10 to 15 times here, and then I would do another 10 to 15 times here, and then I would go back and do three times on each side. So you really want to get yourself warmed up uh, before you even play. And I find that this really helps just to kind of stretch out both sides of your, of your body here. So those are the two big things that I do for pain here, uh, away from the cello. And what's great about like this exercise, you can do this like while you're sitting, I don't know, in orchestra or a rehearsal and you're waiting for somebody to finish practicing their part. You can be doing these exercises while you're sitting and waiting in rehearsal. I, I notice in rehearsal a lot of the time, like it's very common, the culture of, of like orchestra rehearsals is just to sit really calm 
and sit still and do nothing while everybody else is doing uh, their, their practicing. But you can, be, you can be actually working on keeping yourself limber and pain-free while you're rehearsing. So if other people are practicing their music, you can be working on uh, keeping your body nice and limber, right? Okay, so those are two things that I do uh, without the cello, and then there's something that I like to do with the cello, which we're gonna just do right now. So if everybody has your cello, we're just gonna get it out. So the first thing I wanna mention about neck and shoulder pain with the cello. So for those of you who are um, amateur cellists, not professionals, and actually professionals, you might wanna just consider this also. Um, the length of your end pin can have a big effect on how your shoulders and your arms feel when you're playing. So generally speaking, like as I've gotten kind of older, I've actually been lowering my end pin um, and not using such a high end pin. Because I find if your end pin is too high, you're going to be lifting your shoulders more than you need to. So if you want to take a little bit of time just to consider exactly where your end pin is sitting, when you're sitting with your cello, you want to feel like when you bring up your arms, they're not like way up here, right? They're just at a nice, comfortable level to bring up the arms and not feel sore. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do something that's, uh, I take this from yin yoga. It's called square breathing, and I adapted it to cello playing in a way that helps you when you're playing for your right arm to feel really uh, relaxed and your shoulder to drop. And it'll happen hopefully in a very natural way when we incorporate this breathing. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna just breathe in for four beats. So it's gonna be about 60 beats per minute. So kind of a slow beat, we're just gonna breathe in and then breathe out. So you're gonna breathe in, one, two, three, four, breathe in, breathe out, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to take our bow and we're just gonna put it on an open string, like your D string. And with your bow on the string, I want you to breathe in deeply for four beats. And then on the exhale, we're gonna play a long bow for four beats. And then we're gonna stop. So hopefully what you felt when you played the bow as you exhaled was a deep kind of sinking, a sinking of your body and a sinking of your shoulder. So we're going to do that again. We're going to breathe in for four. And then we're going to exhale and play a note. Okay, what we're going to try to do now is we're going to play down bows and up bows, but every bow that we play is going to be on an exhale. So you wouldn't necessarily play like this all the time, but this is something that helps us relax and feel what it's like to feel relaxed when you play your cello, because sometimes we're not in touch with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in for four, exhale, play for four, breathe in for four, exhale, play the other way for four. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, play. One, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, play. One, two, three, four. Good. And you want to be doing this with the most relaxed bow hand that you can muster. So this is very, very light. We're not playing with a heavy tone. We're not playing forte or fortissimo. This is a very light exercise and the point is to exhale while you play okay so i'm going to try it one more time one two three four inhaling and exhale play one two three four inhale one two three four exhale play So hopefully what you're feeling is kind of a nice sinking in your arm. There should be no tension in your right arm at all. If you're feeling any tension in your right arm, just shake it out. Shake it out. Think of a really heavy arm. 
And we're going to do this one more time. Okay, so inhale for four. One, two, three, four. Exhale, play. Two, three, four. Now inhale for four. One, two, three, four. And exhale, play. Two, three, four. So that is my version of basically square breathing, but with the cello. And if you really want to feel relaxed, really relaxed, I recommend trying to do this on, or not trying, but doing it on every string with just a nice sound, not a heavy sound. As you get more comfortable with the exercise, you could maybe try adding a little bit more pressure, a little bit more pull to get a nice big sound. But for now, this is just a light sound. It's to get you connected with the feeling of relaxation. When you're, when you're relaxed and you're playing and you just feel great, and that's what we're gonna do, right? So we're gonna do it on all four strings. So those are three ways um, that we can relieve tension in our right shoulder and our, uh, our neck. Um, so let me just go over those again. So the first thing is to use the fascia release ball. If you have like really um, heavy knots, right? So you can just rub that up against a wall or the door or whatever you have to create pressure. Um, the second thing is to do your yoga stretch, your yin yoga stretch. So you stretch and you're going to circle for 10, three times on each side. And then you're going to do some long bows where you're exhaling every time you play. Okay, so those are three things. There are other things and we can go more deeper into those um, in the future. But for today, those are the three things that I think will really help you. Okay, so let's go on to say our problem number two, which is hand cramping. A lot of people talk to me about their hands and how they get sore when they play. And this is very common for professionals and amateurs, though particularly I notice it with amateur players um, who may spend a lot of time typing. So typing <laughs> and the kinds of uh, movements you need to do with the cello, they're not super compatible. So I find when, you're, when you type a lot, your fingers kind of get into a certain shape and that shape is, a, the, the fingers are not as far apart as they might be when you play the cello, right? So, so typing hands can be a, a big challenge to kind of deal with. So the first thing that I like to do for my hands, I'm gonna come a little bit closer to the screen so you can see, is a pressure point massage for the hands, right? And some of you may already know or have seen this before. Um, I'm gonna hopefully show you a way that helps with the very specific cello issues. Okay, so this is my left hand. So as a cellist, the left hand, often people feel pain or tension in the bottom of the thumb right here and also on this side. So this is where I got my injury, right? When I was playing the popper studies and I was doing this, I was obviously doing it with bad form. <laughs> now I've learned how to do this better, but I got injured throughout here. You know, now I have nice round fingers, but I didn't at the time. I was doing this kind of thing. I mean, first, yeah, first things first, when you play the cello, don't play it with flat fingers, right? You want nice round fingers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a hand massage um, and a pressure point massage. So we're kind of doing something similar, than, uh, similar to the fascia ball that we were using, but we're just gonna use our thumb to do it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start kind of at the base of your hand, just below your pinky, and you're going to dig in. And already I can feel that. So you're digging into the side of your hand. And when you feel, if you feel any deep pain, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stop if you have a pressure point or something that hurts, you're gonna stop and you're going to try to hold that for at least 30 seconds. You're just gonna like really dig in. And while you're on that pressure point, try moving your fingers. So particularly the pinkies, so you're gonna move them around and you're gonna feel stretch and pressure. So you're gonna just be pulling this up here and then we're gonna do that, we're not gonna do it all today, but we're gonna do it on the, on the, the thumb side as well, because this is where I find that a lot of people have pain here. So in the base of the thumb. So you might need to turn your hand over, and then you're just gonna be squeezing up the thumb, and if you find a pressure point, you're gonna hold it. So just hold it, you can breathe. Nice and deep. Right. 
And I'm obviously not holding it quite as long as you would want to if you were doing this on your own because I want to get through all of our material. But you're going to hold that for a good 30 seconds. Yeah, and I can feel, like I feel the base of my thumb here. There's quite a bit of pressure in there. Okay, so these are the main spots usually, but if you have other sore points on your hand, you can stop and massage those out as well. Um, I also find sort of finger pulls can be really helpful. So just pulling your fingers from the base like this. And take your time with this stuff, right? The more of this kind of thing you do to look after your body, uh, the easier it's going to be to play the cello. And you're not going to have those tension issues when you get to the cello. So do these things before you play. Do them while you're rehearsing and other people are uh, sitting around. Right? So we're just going to pull all of the fingers like this. Okay, so this is something you can do without any tools, and I would do this on both hands. So right hand, uh, the, the areas that hurt usually are a little bit different. You might be like hurting around through this side of the hand. So I'm just going to kind of massage in there, nice and deep, really, really deep. And again, be careful with this. If you have an acute injury, you don't want to be rubbing it too, too heavily, but if you're recovering from an injury, you can go deep. So you're just going to rub out your hand in all of the different places. This. And then the last thing I'm going to show you um, for our hand massage is basically just a, a wrist stretch. And some of you maybe are familiar with this. It's a very common wrist stretch. So you just pull, pull back like this. And I like to kind of move while I'm stretching because you get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more movement. So you can pull and move the hand like this. And this stretch you can also do like on a chair, right? And you're going to get an even deeper stretch if you put your, your hands on a chair and just rub them backwards or pull them backwards. Right, so we're going to do that both sides. So this is something you can do without any tools. Now I'm going to show you a couple of tools I use for my hands. Uh, the first tool I just discovered at a dollar store the other day. Um, let's see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So this tool here, this is, I found this in the dollar store. In the dollar store, there's this section. There's all these fun toys for kids. Uh, a lot of them are like sensory toys. So this is a, basically a squishy ball with gel, it's got like gel beads in it. So I discovered um, that when you squish it, you get a really good kind of simulation of the nice round hands that we need when we're, when we're cello playing. So we're just squishing the ball. Now there's not a lot of resistance in this squishy thing, but that can be great. If your hands are really, really stiff, they don't need a lot of resistance to just kind of get them moving. Okay, so you're going to just squish this ball like this. And the added bonus of this is that it's fun. And when you uh, squish the ball, you're going to feel nice and relaxed, right? You can breathe. So basically a bigger version of a stress ball. But this is like super fun. So this is going to be really fun for kids. I know most of you here today are adults, but some of the kids... You kind of enjoy just squishing this ball. It's going to keep your hands in really good shape for cello playing, right? So you're just going to squish, squish, squish. Okay, and if you need a little bit more. So this, I would say this doesn't really develop strength in your hand as much as it helps you with the shape you need for the left hand and the shape you need in the right hand, right? Keeping your thumb nice and flexible. But if you want to strengthen your hands, I found something really cool at um, a climbing supply store. So a sporting supply store, but the climbing section. So I found this thing. It's called the Grip Saver Plus. And I'm just going to show you the box. So this is a Grip Saver Plus. There are various tools like this for climbing. And what it says on the box, it says that uh, strengthen and balance all the muscles that open and close the hand in one exercise. And I think this works really, really well. 
Uh, it also says that it prevents injury, super effective for the prevention of climbing related finger, wrist, and elbow injuries. So I've noticed that the injuries that we might get as a cellist, very similar to the injuries that a climber might get when they're trying to use their hands, right, to grab rocks. So same thing with climbers, like they need to really grab those rocks, but they don't want to be like hurting or injuring their hands. So this thing here, I'm going to show you, it's really cool. So you put your fingers, let's do it. I'm going to try it with my left hand first. Put your fingers in here. Okay, and then your thumb goes in the bottom like this. Now this is quite a hard ball, uh, but you can squish it. So you squish like this. And as soon as I squish, I can feel this all the way through my arm. So this is actually really good as well for tennis elbow or any issues you might be having with your wrist, right? It's strengthening through there. So the box told me that I should just squish this for like a second and then release. Um, I think that probably depends on the condition of your hands. I've been told as a cellist, if you're a professional cellist, you probably have extremely strong left hand grip. Uh, maybe even as strong as a climber, I don't know. But you could probably squish this for a little bit longer and then let it go. Squish and then let go, just like that. And I think this is doing, like I can feel it, I can feel it working all the way through here, right, to strengthen all the muscles in here. And I think it's really good for maybe rehabilitating tennis elbow as well, because I can feel it in here also. So I'm just gonna switch to the other hand. And show you that. So, do, do, okay. Actually, no, I'm not going to bother with the other hand. So, same idea, right? You're going to you're going to squish it just like this. And what's really good about this and the ball is something that I've noticed with lots of cellists, professionals and amateurs, is that this part of your thumb, the base of your thumb, a lot of people clamp in here. You might not even notice you're doing it. And that's because the hand wants to grip, right? Our hands are grippy and they do this and this is what they want to do. Um, but we have to kind of fight against the natural tendency, right? And just kind of make sure that everything is making a ball shape. And this is really, this is really going to strengthen your hand. There is another one like this that I saw. Um, I don't have it here, but it basically you're going to squish each finger individually. And I've tried these in the past and they're really, really hard. So if you use this and your hands get strong, you could use this one and it would make it even stronger. So they're like little springs. So I recommend that you go to your climbing supply store. Uh, I went to MEC, uh, which is a mountain equipment co-op store, and uh, find yourself one of these. This was like $20. You might get to find them on Amazon for cheaper. Um, but this is really great for those hands. So I'm gonna show you now something on the cello. So if you have your cello around, I'm going to show you my favorite two exercises for hand tension on the cello. The first one, you might, it might find it a little bit hard to see my hand, but I'm going to try to describe what I'm doing. You can do this with your bow or without. So I'm going to do it without my bow just for now, so I can kind of focus on the left hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to just play one finger scale. So you guys might have done these with your teachers or in your practice, you're going to play a one finger scale. So you're going to take finger one and you're going to, we're going to start on the D string and we're going to play a D major scale. You could do this, uh, you could do this with half steps. It doesn't matter. The point is we're, what we're doing is we're practicing moving from first finger. We're going to release the finger. We're going to wiggle the thumb. Then we're going to shift and then we're going to put the finger back down. So the important action here is the wiggling of the thumb because we're rele releasing the tension of the grip. So we're gonna do that with our one finger scale. So I'm starting on open D, then E. After I play E, I'm going to wiggle my thumb. So you can't really see, I'm gonna just move it here. You're wiggling the thumb in the air below your fingerboard. Okay, and then I'm gonna move to the next note and wiggle the thumb. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right? And you can just keep going like this. You can do it with half steps if you want. That's fine. Whatever scale you want. It doesn't actually even matter what note you're playing as long as you're moving down the fingerboard. 
and wiggle your thumb. Just like that. And you can try that on every string. Just wiggle your thumb. Getting a little bit more pressure on the lower strings. And the wiggling of the thumb, when you come to do shifting, you'll find that if you've done these thumb wiggles, when you shift, your thumb is going to kind of start to automatically release. And that's what we need. A lot of that tension in the left hand happens when we shift between positions, and our thumb kind of wants to stay back where it was. So we want that thumb to travel with the finger. So you're going to do that with your first finger, and then you're going to try doing it with all of the fingers. So we try the second finger, move up, wiggle, right up and down, wiggle the thumb, and all the way up to the fourth finger. And the fourth finger, you're going to find the pinky, um, especially with amateurs, your pinky is not well developed, right? So the pinky needs some extra support. So think back to when you're using that ball, you want a very, very round pinky. You need to support it from your elbow, wiggle the thumb, and be very mindful of how much work you do with just the pinky, because the pinky is very susceptible to injury. And if you're not uh, used to playing for many hours a day, you don't want to just be putting lots of pressure on that pinky. Okay. So that is my exercise for releasing hand pressure um, in the left hand. And the other thing I like to do as well that helps with left hand pressure are finger slides. So you can do this with your bow. It's more fun with your bow because you make more fun sound. Again, we're going to use one finger at a time. So I'm going to start with the first finger. And what I want you to do, you're not going to put the first finger on the note. You're going to put the finger between the string. So you're going to put your first finger between the A and the D string. And you're going to kind of hook it so it's kind of touching the string. You're hooked on the string. And you're going to slide. And then off the end of your fingerboard. Some of you may remember this from when you were a kid. You might have done some exercises like this. They're called sticky slides. And the purpose of sticky slides is to help you feel very comfortable moving up and down the fingerboard and to release your thumb. So notice that how your thumb is when you do these should be feeling very relaxed. So off the fingerboard, and then try it between the D and the G string. Right? And this is an also, I noticed, this is a very good way to notice if there's any tension in your left arm as you're moving up the fingerboard. So some people, some of my students mentioned to me that once they get kind of around this area, uh, we call the fourth or the fifth position, their arm sort of starts to hurt. So you can experiment when you're doing these slides of lifting your elbow up, dropping your thumb, and see if you can find a movement where you're completely relaxed all the way to the top of the fingerboard. And then if we integrate that with the breathing we did, uh, this is a really relaxing activity. Breathe in for four, and then on the slide, breathe out. So it's going to be like this. Breathe in, and breathe out and slide. And let go. Then breathe in, and try the next string. Breathe out. Okay, and then the next string, breathe in. And breathe out and play. Good, and remembering that we're in between the strings, so we're not right on the string. Because when you put your finger right on the string, that creates some extra pressure. And right, right now, for this, we want a very, very light pressure. Just like when we were doing the long bows, just a very light pressure. Because we're trying to get in touch with um, how it feels to play the instrument with ease. And I think a lot of us as cello players, we really want to get out that passionate big sound. So we have a lot of tendency to really just like dig in and everything gets tight. So I really encourage you um, to play and practice. Uh, if you're trying to get rid of tension, play and practice quietly. Um, I don't know if, that, if you guys know um, 
Miles Davis, the trumpet player, who's known for having the most beautiful trumpet tone in the world, uh, was known for that. Uh, he used to have to practice, uh, like, basically pianissimo all the time, because he had an apartment and his neighbors were, like, really didn't like him playing. So he would practice super, super, super quiet, and he developed so much control over his tone, and he's probably one of the most relaxed jazz players, um, out there. When you let's just listen to him, how he plays, he's very, very relaxed. And you can do a similar thing on the cello. I don't think we need to be trying to get out that huge sound all the time. You can relax and play just nice and quiet, right? It's actually a really loud instrument, so you don't need to try to make it loud. Um, yeah, so that's my exercise for the left hand tension. So the third problem that I want to discuss and help you guys with is fatigue in your right arm. So uh, right arm fatigue. So some of the things that we've just done, they will help you with that. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the arm and uh, how we remain um, energetic as we play. So not getting tired in this arm and not getting tired in the right side of your body. So the exercise we already did, the square breathing, we're going to kind of build on that exercise. So the square breathing, what we did is we're going to put our bow on the D string. We're going to breathe in for four, play for four while exhaling. Stop for four, breathe in, exhale, play. going to do but we're going to add something to this because what I've noticed is that a lot of cello players when they play they're going back and forth with their arm like this and then after about 10 minutes maybe maybe even less you're tired right this is this is this arm movement even without the bow if I did this for 10 minutes I'm gonna I'm gonna die okay so we need to do something to support this motion so that we don't get tired and what we need to do is use our bodies, the core of our body, because our body is strong, whereas our arms are not quite as strong. Uh, we need to support the movement with our bodies. So what we're going to do is we're going to move. And some of you might be very comfortable moving with your cello. Some of you might not be so comfortable. But I find that if you can incorporate moving into your cello playing, especially if you're a small person. Uh, I'm only five foot four. Some of you might be even smaller than that. If you're like five foot four or smaller, you absolutely have to move your body. If you're a taller, you might find that you're able to open up your arms and it's not strenuous for you. But if you're a small person or you're a child, um, you want to be moving while you play. It's also a lot more expressive and more beautiful, right? It makes it look like you're more into the music. You're able to express yourself more. So we're going to start with the movement. Um, we're going to breathe in. We're going to play for four beats. And while we do that, we're also moving our entire body with the bow. So you're going to bring your cello with the bow like this. One, two, three, four. Exhale and move. One, two, three, four. And you should find when you do that that it's a lot easier to move your arm. It's a lot easier than just doing this, right? You can do this for a little bit, but that's going to hurt unless you support the movement with your body. And actually, when you support the movement with your body, your arm doesn't have to move as far as well. So it's more efficient. Like this, breathe in. Exhale. And then on the A string, let's talk about the A string for a second, because this is where a lot of strain happens for a lot of players. And often the reason is when we're on the A string and we want to keep our uh, bow parallel to the bridge, like we've been taught, um, basically when we pull out like this, the arm is like really, really stretched out, right? So same thing as before, we're going to move, but not only are we going to move to the right, we're also going to come forward a little bit. So you may even notice that your left butt cheek <laughs> comes off your chair. So you're all the way on the right side, and then you come back. So what's happened there, instead of initiating the bow movement from my arm, 
I'm initiating it from my body. So the body moves the bow, not your arm. And when your body moves the bow, your body is strong. It has a strong core. And that means you're going to be a lot less tired over time if you're doing this motion than if you're just doing this motion. Because this motion, you end up with like, you're going to end up with soreness under your shoulder. So we want to move the whole body. The whole, when the whole body moves, you're not going to feel as much pain. Okay, so let's just do that again on the A string. So we're going to move to the right, move out, and move back, up. Now it looks like I lost the video live for a second there, I'm not quite sure. So is they're having trouble with playing the video. Okay, so give me a second. If you guys can see me, if you can still see the video, can you type into the chat? Uh, if you can't see me, can you let me know? It just, it's giving me a signal that they're having trouble playing the video. So if you can see me, can you let me know? Hmm. I think what I might need to do, okay. You can see me, Betsy, can you hear me? Yeah, everything's okay? Okay, okay, oh, that's great, okay. So I have to, it might just be a little bug with Facebook. It's just saying that it can't play the video. But if you can see me, that's really great. Okay, awesome, thank you. All right, cool, okay. So we are almost done this section. Um, the one other thing I wanna say about right hand tension. Oh, Kristen can't hear me, still working lots. Okay, but now we're back. Okay, awesome, thanks guys, that's great. Yay, okay. So the other thing I want to say about the right arm tension, a lot of right arm tension or right arm fatigue comes from, and you probably know this, your bow hold. So what most of my students, all my students, refine your bow hold so that it is relaxed and it is uh, working well for you. It can take a long time to do that. But there are a couple of exercises that get at that a little bit faster. And again, like I was saying before, it helps if you don't play super loud. Uh, we're gonna do this exercise. Um, some of my students are here with us today. They'll know this exercise. If you um, are not a student of mine, you might, might have done this in the past. The, the exercise is to play a bow, so play like a long bow, and then take off one finger at a time as you're playing. So what this does is, is it discourages you from gripping your bow really tight because you can't when you have to let go of the fingers. So this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna start on the D string with all your fingers on the bow with your nice relaxed bow hold that I know you all have. Okay, shake it out, put it on there, very relaxed. And at about a like mezzo piano kind of uh, dynamic, we're gonna just pull across the string again, breathe in before you do this. And then as you exhale, you're going to take a finger off per count. So it's gonna be one, two, three. And then obviously you can't take your first finger off because you have to hold the bow. But you see how we did that? We pulled across and took one finger off at a time. One, two, three. Now I want you to notice when you get to the tip of your bow, just take note of what your thumb feels like. If your thumb feels terrible, like it's really, really, really gripping for dear life, try to find some comfort there. Just like sit there for a second and just like move it around until it feels a little bit less tight and then move back. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're going one, not only for your bow hold but also for your arm because a lot of time the, the pressure we're feeling in our arm is from a tight bow grip and if you're holding the bow really really tight that can come all the way through your arm and cause all kinds of problems here so you need to let go a little bit especially again if you have a small hand smaller hand you need to let go and then come back. okay so that's my exercise 
size for your uh, right arm. So those are the three problems um, that I wanted to look at today. Hopefully those problems, so what we did with each pain issue is that we looked at ways to relieve and release the pain, right? So that's like the physio type stuff, like the ball and, um, you know, the hand grip. Uh, we looked at toning and strengthening the muscles around the area that's hurting. It's very important. Um, my my uh, teacher, Shauna Rolston, had a personal trainer and she was always doing like lifting weights. As much as you can get into weightlifting, the better I use. Uh, a pretty heavy weight. I mean, I don't know. This is 10 pounds. It's not that heavy. But if you're not used to lifting weights, this can be kind of heavy. And I use this to just condition my arms, right? You want to condition your arms, condition your shoulders. Uh, lifting weights this way, right? Shoulder lifts. As long as your shoulder isn't coming up, these are really, really helpful. Um, I started with uh, like an eight pound weight, but if you're not used to lifting weights, you can start with a much lower weight. And if you're a child, you might want to just do like two or three pounds. Uh, but if you can condition your arms and your shoulders, that really helps with pain a lot, right? So yeah, so lifting, lifting weights on both sides. And whatever you do, do all of your exercises on both sides sides of your body okay so hopefully uh, that will help you so we did the three things we're relieving and releasing pain uh we're toning the muscles and then we're trying to do an activity on the cello so this is kind of where we integrated into the cello playing do an activity on the cello that is extremely relaxing so just very long tones not loud just a nice sort of quiet sound and you're just really being mindful of things that hurt and how you can work that out yourself. Okay, so that's about all of the things that um, we have time kind of in my workshop to talk to you about today. Um, there is a long, long list, the things that I read out, right? So we kind of covered like pain in the right shoulder, hands that cramp, right arm fatigue. There is this huge list of things uh, that we want to prevent from happening. Right, a very, very long list. So if you are interested in continuing to learn more about this, um, I'm actually kind of looking for beta testers. So I'm gonna be kind of creating uh, a course of this like cello yoga stuff, and it's gonna be like six modules, so about 30 lessons. Um, and I need beta testers for this. So I need people who are gonna kind of take the course and tell me uh, what things work for them, what things don't. Um, and in this course, you're going to just do like all of the things, right? We're going to go through all of the things that hurt. Um, if you are one of my beta testers, um, I'll get on the phone with you in a video chat and we'll try to figure out like what's going on for you with your, with your pain and your tension. Or we'll try to work through it together and see what we can do to, uh, to get rid of those issues for you. Um, so yeah, so you'll be able to do that. Um, we're going to start a cello yoga Facebook group so that we can all chat together about our uh, things that are going on and I can answer questions there. And also I'm creating, uh, this is really neat, and I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, so I create, I'm a songwriter and a composer, and um, I'm creating meditative cello music that's specifically meant to be therapeutic for cello players. So it'll be meditative songs um, that that uh, help with certain types of movement on the cello in a therapeutic way. So I'm very excited about that because a lot of the exercises out there for strengthening and releasing tension, they're super boring. So I wanna create some really beautiful music for that. So if you want to be a beta tester for that, let me know in the comments and I can get back to you with some information about that. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, so it is now question and answer time. So I'm gonna just come to the computer and if you guys have any questions, I'm just gonna take a look in the comments and we'll uh, talk about some of those things. All right, so let's take a look. We've got, guys have some really cool comments here. So if you have a question, feel free to put it into the comments and we will answer. Actually, I have two questions that people sent me in advance that I wanna talk about. So one question, uh, I think it was Rachel, asked me about, um, Rachel asked me about pain uh, when you're sitting. So when you're sitting, playing the cello and you play for a long time, uh, we get pain, right, in the lower back, or a lot of us do. 
And usually that pain, it, it's related to sitting for a long time. As everyone knows, sitting isn't the greatest thing and cellists have to do a lot of it. So we need to do some things to mitigate that pain or mitigate the problems that can happen when you sit for too long. So the major thing, and I already kind of showed you one of the things that I do. So when you're playing the cello, I think it's very important not to stay still, not to stay stationary. I feel like a lot of players, when we play, and maybe I see this a little bit more with amateurs, but I've seen it with professionals as well. We keep our body really straight, and then we kind of move our arms like around, right? But we don't move our bodies. And as you're playing, it's very important. You need to be shifting your weight kind of all the time, right? So you're shifting from right to left, and it's almost like a dance. And if you can keep yourself moving while you play, that is really gonna help with your pain because you're not stuck in one spot. I think a lot of the pain from sitting, I'm gonna sh show you, a lot of pain from sitting is like you sit here, you plant yourself, and then you just kind of stay there. And I think what we need to do is we need to get a little bit more lively. So my teacher talked about feeling like um, a tiger that's ready to pounce. So basically that feeling, if you think about it, so you've got weight on the balls of your feet. So you come forward and both sides of your body are activated. So you're strong in your core, but you're able to kind of respond and move like this. So even doing this sitting on a chair, I'm moving back and forth. This can really help you to get the idea of how you need to feel when you're playing. And I think we have a tendency, especially if we have music in front of us, like we get really focused, right, on that music, and we're just doing this, and we are not feeling it. You need to feel it, and you need to breathe. And that's gonna help a little bit with that pain. Other things too, obviously, the chair that you're sitting on is super important. It needs to be the right height for you. Um, if it's not the right height, like you're playing on different chairs at different places, um, it could be really great to get yourself an Obus form cushion. So some of these cushions, they kind of, uh, they're almost triangle wedge shaped. And then they, so that, what that does is when you sit on it, it kind of pushes your weight forward, which is really important because it gets the weight off of your sit bones and kind of more into the front, uh, into your quads and your butt, where you're more able to handle that weight, right? So keeping your weight forward, I think that can really help with the pain of sitting and moving. Moving when you play and breathing. So one of the things I wanna go more deeply into, which we don't have time for today, is but how to use your breath to really release the tension when you play. It's really, really important stuff. And why I called kind of this program, calling it cello yoga, so that we can really get into um, breathing as a player. So hopefully that helps a little bit, Rachel. The other question um, somebody asked me, uh, he's, a, he's a very new cellist, he asked about pinching nerves. Um, I'm not quite sure like where the nerves might be pinching, but there's a few places. Again, pinching nerves in your lower back, that can happen if you're sitting too heavily on your chair, so you need to kind of come up. You can pinch nerves in the right side of your body if you're twisting too much. We have to twist a little bit as cellists. I think that's probably where my arthritis in my right side comes from, is the twist. But again, when you're moving, if you're able to turn your whole body and come forward, it's a lot better than just like bringing your arm around, right? So bring everything forward. If you're turning, that will help with uh, pinching of nerves. So hopefully that will avoid any pinching. Uh, pinching can happen in your hands too. Again, we talk about that clamping, right? If you're clamping anything, you're gonna pinch nerves. So you need to keep things soft, very soft. Just think soft muscles all the time. So let's take a look and see if there's any other questions that people have. I'm just gonna look down here. Let's see. Great. Oh, oh, lots. Okay, right hip pain. Okay, yes, right hip pain. So yeah, so that's exactly what I have in my right hip, I have arthritis in my hip. So Dan's question, right hip pain. So my combination, my winning combination for right hip pain is the fascia release ball. Now this hurts like heck. If you put that right in your in your hip socket, or you put the ball in your hip socket and then you roll it on the ground, it's gonna hurt like pretty badly. Uh, but when you roll out around for like 10 minutes or so, after that, you're gonna feel uh, quite a bit of relief. And then the same thing, um, like I was just talking about, when you're sitting, when you're sitting on your chair, the right hip pain usually comes from this twist. So we twist 
with the arm to get around to the A string, but we don't bring our body with us. So you need to set up your sort of the movement that you're doing so that you come forward with your whole body. So you move from your core. If any of you have taken yoga classes, you'll know how important the core of your body is because everything's really strong in your core. Uh, you can work on strengthening your core, which is great, uh, but this core, can, you want as much as possible for your movements to come from your core. So when you move with your body in mind and don't leave it behind, that helps a lot with right hip pain, for sure. So yeah, I use the fascia release. Um, I do a lot of leg lifts, so anything that um, kind of lifts your leg, you lie down on the ground and like lift your leg, that really helps with hip pain as well. And I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna make a resource, uh, a PDF with all of the things we did today, plus some extra tips, and I'm gonna send that to you afterwards. And if you have any extra questions, you can, um, you can also message them to me. All right, let's take a look at some other stuff here. I have previously injured rotator cuffs. Can I still do the shoulder exercise? Yes, I believe so. So what I've learned about these exercises, so a lot of them are like physio-based exercises. Um, if you are recently injured, like, you know, you had your surgery like five weeks ago or something, you should probably lay off uh, intense weightlifting with your shoulder. However, if, you, if your injury is kind of older, it's totally fine to do these, uh, these shoulder type uh, exercises. You just want to make sure you're very aware. Um, so basically with pain, if you feel sharp pain when you do an exercise, you need to stop. Just stop it right away. You either need to like uh, bring it back a bit, the intensity of what you're doing, or you just need to stop doing it altogether and do something else. However, if you're feeling kind of a dull-ish pain, these types of exercises, like where you stretch for a long time, or you do gentle rotations, or you're lifting a weight, these are not going to injure you anymore. You're gonna be okay. Just be, be certain if you do any weight lifting that you start with a very small weight, right? Don't lift more than you can. You should be able to do like five repetitions with your weight very easily without um, without any fatigue. If you can't, then you need to do something a little bit lighter. But yes, I think so. When, you, when you've had, my mom actually has uh, rotator cuff injuries. Um, she's, and she's had surgery, I think, in both, both shoulders or one of her sore shoulders. Um, and yeah, it takes a little while after the surgery or when you've been injured. You know, you don't want to be exercising in acute pain, uh, but after a little while you can start um, doing these things. So yes, you can do these exercises. Okay, let's take a look. What else? Anything else? Oh yeah, Tai Chi. Yeah, they are kind of Tai Chi. I've never actually done Tai Chi, but I've seen it and that's right. It does kind of look like Tai Chi. Right hand starts to hurt after about 10 minutes, but I'm also very out of practice. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. So. The thing about a lot of these exercises, they are about maintenance, right? So there's no really easy fix uh, for things that hurt other than kind of getting in the practice of doing them regularly. So um, these kinds of like, say, hand exercises, so you set your right hand with your bow hold. So yeah, if you haven't held a bow for a while, it's gonna take you a while to kind of get back to a place where you feel comfortable with that. And the muscles in your hand need to develop. Right, so you need to kind of develop those movements again using a grip, a grip strengthener. I feel like that could really, really help you with that. This is the incredible amount of pressure and good pressure. Like you're getting a very even balanced exercise when you squeeze this ball. So I would recommend doing that, and also the exercise with your bow where you let fingers go, so you let the pressure go in the back of your hand. That's very important. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. So we just have a couple more minutes, I think, and then we'll need to we'll need to get going. So I'm dealing with crooked left index finger. I am currently changing my left hand thumb completely in order to play in tune. It's either that or I have to find a uh, cello with a shorter string length than my seventh eighth. I find that my left forearm muscles get very tired. So left forearm, yeah. Does this indicate I'm doing something wrong? Okay. Crooked left index finger. Hmm. 
I think it depends, Betsy, on maybe how like how long you're practicing for. So that's something maybe we could message about. Um, I can have a little bit more of a conversation with you about that because I would kind of need to see uh, what you're doing when you're playing and how much you're practicing as well. That can have a big effect on what's happening. Pain in the left forearm or tiredness in the left forearm often for me suggests that there's tension in the hand. It most often comes from squeezy tension in the hand and the thumb. So again, if you can strengthen your hands and get a good, um, sort of a good uh, shape here, this will translate to less tension throughout the arm, hopefully. Uh, it could be also related to like how your, where your arm is sitting when you play. Um, if you have a teacher, they can talk to you about the different angles required to play on different, on different strings. Now you mentioned your string length, that it's shorter string length. Yeah. So, okay, so actually this is something I just want to quickly mention before we have to go. Um, for amateur players, um, especially if you're like an amateur player and you just started playing, let's say, in your 30s or your 40s, um, there are many different tensions. Well, there's three main different tensions of strings for the cello. You can have light tension strings, medium tension strings, and um, very heavy strings. If you're an amateur and you don't practice very often, and, uh, and you may have some other issues with your body, I very strongly recommend that you put light gauge strings on your cello. They are not going to be as loud as like, you know, solo, solo strings, but they are going to be a lot easier for you to push down to the fingerboard. You need to make sure your cello is really set up super well so that the strings are not too high, right? So when you push down your string, you don't need a crazy amount of strength to do that. So light gauge strings really work well, I find, for um, for amateur players, for sure. Obviously, if you're if you're a professional player, you might need the, the heavier strings because you need a bigger sound. Even that though, like I found, like a lot of professionals are putting super heavy gauge strings on their on their instruments and they're playing like chamber music or orchestra music. You don't need that kind of sound. Like you can go with a medium gauge and save yourself save yourself some trouble over here. Okay, so I'm gonna just look at one more question and then I think we're gonna probably end it for today. Oh, thanks, Anna. Yeah, if you wanna be a beta tester, that's awesome. Let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you guys about that. Uh, I'm very excited about sort of uh, like developing this course and so basically the beta testers are going to get a major discount off of the course right because you're kind of helping me develop it so it's going to be really exciting and there's going to be a bunch of stuff uh kind of perks that you're going to get right like there's going to be a book that i'm developing i'm going to be on the phone with you and there's going to be all kinds of cool stuff that we're going to get to do together so yeah if you want to be a beta tester let me know uh let's see if i'm going to take one more question let's see there's another question there Pinky. Yeah, crooked pinkies. Okay, so a couple of people have crooked pinkies, and that could be, yeah, in your left hand, that's a challenge, right? The pinky is a real challenge. It's either crooked, or it's short, or, you know, it's got issues. Um, I found the number one thing for dealing with weird shaped fingers is just remembering that when you play, each finger is an individual. So you need to, when you go to a finger, the other fingers need to let go. So as you're playing, right, you support each finger individually. And of course the pinky is the least <laughs> cooperative usually, and sometimes it needs help from the third finger. So yeah, so that's kind of, again, I can get more into this in the future, but yeah, the shape of your finger uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue assuming that you can support it with something else. It's going to need some help from another part of your hand. And let's take a look. Anything else? I think, I think that's about all uh, that, uh, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, I think so. So if you have another question that I haven't yet um, answered for you, feel free to send me a message. 
Uh, that is all the material that I have to share with you today. Uh, if you would like to get a beta tester and you would like to you know, join the cello yoga uh, course, I would love to have you. So just let me know uh, if you want to do that. And um, I will send everybody who is registered, I have your email, so I'm going to be sending you a couple PDFs which will say what we did today, answer the questions that were answered, and give you a little bit more information about where we can go from here. Because I know there was a ton of stuff Right, all of this stuff that we didn't get to, uh, and lots of different pains and tensions and problems, and I want to be able to help you all. So, uh, thank you so much for coming and listening to the live. I had a great time. I hope you learned a few things, and uh, we'll talk in the future. Yes, thank you, Betsy. It was really great. Thank you. I'll give you guys a clap. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.